So let's take a look at what is the role of an IT asset in enterprise security in this module. Now, first of all, what is an IT asset? And IT assets, we've been talking a lot about IT assets, and um, it's a specific terminology. An IT asset is any resource, such as hardware, software, information, even a human resource, or facility, for example, a data center, uh, owned or utilized by the organization for IT processing. Now, this is the IT asset life cycle. Whenever an IT asset is introduced into the organization, there's a complete life cycle, and this is a part of security measures. You have to plan for the asset. Why do you need the asset? Who needs the asset? How much does it cost? Is there an approval in place? Uh, you uh, conduct the procurement, and the RFP is undertaken, and then you do the installation as per the planning that you've already done. What objectives is it going to meet? Then you secure the IT asset and, and configure it for security purposes. You harden the IT asset, maybe perform vulnerability management. Then you perform an acceptance and, and you check that the installation has been done as per the requirement and planning. And, um, and there's a sign off and it's moved into a production environment. And then you support and maintain the IT asset. And finally, when it reaches the end of its life, you retire it and you dispose it off and you remove it from the uh, IT sites. So this is another diagram and let's just quickly talk about each of the steps. So step number one is planning. You have, the, for an IT asset, you need to know the requirements. You need to have an owner and a risk owner and we'll talk about what is, what is an owner. An owner is, uh, for example, a laptop owner is the person who is assigned the laptop but the risk owner is the department that consolidates all those assets. And then you have a high level design why is the asset being acquired and what design and configuration will it have? The budget approvals and the project planning. All of this falls under step number one in the planning. Then you go to the procurement process. You initiate the RFP, you do the vendor selection, you issue the purchase order, you do the contract and the SLA with the vendor and you do the kickoff meeting and the project starts. Eventually, there's the installation and uh, commissioning. So you do the site preparation. It could be a data center, a rack that is being added. You do the delivery of the equipment by the vendor, the configuration uh, is done, you test it and you commission, uh, let's say a server in a rack in the data center. And then you perform the security, step number four. Security controls, there's a security checklist developed, you develop an SOP, make sure the department handling this knows what to do with it, and you test the security. And step number five is you're accepting now because you're getting ready for commissioning sign-off. You have the test scripts, you perform the user acceptance testing or UAT, you do a security accreditation, security department comes in, make sure the uh, device or the equipment is, is uh, as per the security configuration, as per its use, as per the plan. You do a commissioning sign-off by management, you do the change management steps and move it into production. And finally, in step number six, you do the support and maintenance. Um, now the equipment is in production and you would maybe patch it, you would do upgrades, vendor support, maintenance repair, change requests, renewals, upgrades, updates, and monitoring and audits. And then finally, in step number seven, you retire and dispose of the equipment when it's no longer of any use. You decommission it, uh, remove it from the network, dispose and salvage it, and update the inventory so that it's reflected. This is another view. And in each of the steps, there is actually something to do for security. There's security planning. In procurement, you need to make sure that the uh, RFP and the vendor meets the security requirements. The installation, you need to make sure that the installation checklist has the security configuration. You're securing or hardening the asset, and prior to commissioning, you need to make sure that the security testing is done. There's acceptance and accreditation for security. In support and maintenance, you need to make sure that your vendor and staff are trained and they are performing the security functions. And when there is a retirement and disposal, you need to make sure that the security procedure is followed and you're not releasing hard disks with um, important information while disposing and salvaging the equipment. So what is an asset owner and what's a risk owner? An asset owner is a person um, in the organization responsible for managing an asset or who is handed over an asset. For example, you could be handed a company mobile phone and you would be the asset owner because you're uh, utilizing this asset. But a risk owner is slightly different. It's somebody belonging to slightly higher management who would perhaps consolidate all the 5,000 mobiles, you know, and keep track of those mobiles and is responsible for making risk-related decisions 
in order to prevent risk to the organization um, emanating from those mobiles. Okay, so that's a risk owner. And then we have acceptable use. Uh, whenever there's an IT asset and we talk about its life cycle and its asset management, um, there's acceptable use of IT assets, which is an important clause from ISO 27001. Be it a laptop, mobile, web browsing, which is a service, an email usage, servers, or company data, for every type of IT asset, there would be an acceptable use. For example, laptops should be um, shut down properly. There should be updated antiviruses. If you take it outside the office, it should not be kept out in the open. Um, if you keep it in the car, you should keep it in the boot. You should not keep it in visible um, view uh, so that somebody can break a window of a car and steal your laptop. Um, while at home, you need to follow the security policies. So every type of IT asset uh, has an acceptable use policy, and that needs to be developed, communicated to the IT users and to the business users, and then it needs to be followed, and there need to be audits done to make sure that that policy is being complied. Thank you.